Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Masanda One Fan Vlog. Uh, we've been away for a while. Uh, we've also been on an Afghan break. <laughs> <laughs> so we are here with our mid-season report. And obviously we'll preview um, the season going forward. Uh, I'm here with um, Coach Rulani uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Coach, how are you? Kent, very mm. well, thank you. Yeah. Um, Great to be with you guys of once course. again. Of course, yeah, I I love how we how we're doing it this season. Uh, beginning of last last season, uh, we met before the season started, and um, we had a chat about what happened and what's to come. And at the beginning of this season, we were like, you know what? Let's just see how the season plays out, and then maybe let's have a debrief in the middle of the season to to see how far we've come and uh, how far we can still go. Um, and from where I'm standing. So far, so good. Yeah. What's your? What 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 do you see from where you are? Yeah, I think I think what's what's what what puts me at ease is a, uh, is a little bit of of um, an impression and a feeling that I get that the team has gone one step more. I get, I get that feeling, mm. um, and and this is what we needed, and this is what we planned, and this is what we spoke about at the at the end of last season, and 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 it's not just only in relation to the results because already at this juncture of the season, which is midway, we've accumulated more points than we did last season at this point. We are still unbeaten. Uh, we've had a, a domestic cup final, which at this point last season we didn't have. Yeah. We've got a trophy in the bag, which at this point, the previous season, we didn't have. Yes. Um, but I also think collectively and individually, I think as a team, I think in terms of performances, I think we've become a stronger team. But also, I think the players have worked very, very hard to improve and to be better players. So, so I I have a feeling of of being quietly content with the work that we've done. But also, I I do think that we can get better. And even though I think the conditions and the circumstances are very, very difficult to get a lot better than what we have done so far, but I I do still believe that we can play better. I think we can do certain things better. Um, from a performance pers perspective, and and then also I think we can we can we can get better results because there are games that I was very disappointed in with regards to not just the performance but the result and 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 then of course my feeling is very clear that uh, always the performance is is as a reflection of the result. And so if you look at the result, it's easy to put the performance with the result most of the time. But there are games where uh, you play better and you lose. <clears throat> like the MTN 8 final, I thought we were better, but we lost. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think the Culling Black label against TS Galaxy, we made two mistakes, but we played better and, yeah. and we lost. Yeah. And uh, But there's also games like Mazembe <laughs> where I felt we played better and we lost. But, but then there's games where I, f I thought we deserved to win, which we won. Uh, and there's games where I just think we deserved to lose, which we won. So sometimes football, it is like that. It's not always, it, it's not always like that, but it is like that sometimes. And but most of the time, I think we've we've always we've achieved the results that we deserve to achieve based on the performances that we put in. Yeah, I hear you. And one of the the most talked about thing at the beginning of the season, at least for Sundown supporters, yeah, was uh, ch the change of style or the change of. Uh, we can say change of formation or yeah. change of structure. And you said something about last season we were a bit more predictable with the diamond, and um, you felt like we needed to. I remember you were you you, you went to Brazil recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the end of last season. You you had planned to go to Brazil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you didn't go, and you yeah. said you watched all the games that we played. Yeah, <laughs> like all of them. Yeah, and thirty six. Imagine, and you watched all thirty six games, and you said to yourself. We have to change how we play mm. because um, we are a bit more too predictable, mm. and we we changed our style of play. I remember you had to defend the diamond, yeah, and yeah. at some points you 
almost a two defender now we're playing yeah yeah this season is that frustrating yeah it is very frustrating <laughs> it, no but it is frustrating it is, and 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 uh, but 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 it, but I get to a point where I get I'm tired of trying to convince people of certain things. Mm. I'm I'm tired of trying to convince people that the number six does not need a physical player. Mm. Uh, uh, I can I can put a, a Kante and a Tony Cruz for an example, and I would always go for a Tony Cruz, a more technical player, a deep up mm, line playmaker than a than a player with physical attributes, but but is is more limited technically. But of course, I think that the thinking amongst a lot of people is that uh, number six must be a Roy Keane prototype, you know, with the physicality and, and, and winning ground jewels and getting stuck in. But but my, my type of six is completely different. Uh, and there's a lot of things that I've, I've, I, I believe I can't change. Like, like to say to people that Sailor is not a player that plays high up the line. He's a player that can give you a lot of very good things when he arrives in the final third, mm. but not when he's waiting in the final third. Mm. And a lot of people disagree with me. Uh, so there are things that if eventually you just say, you get tired of trying to convince people of this thing. Mm. Uh, because eventually what is, what is very good about, um, about football, because it reflects life, it is the crazy ideas, and when you when you when you keep working on these ideas and the things that you can see, and you fully devote yourself with an with an obsessive mind, mm. uh, the truth eventually reveals itself. You know, mm. so mm. so it's it it is those things. The four four two diamond when we went into it, it caused a huge uproar. <laughs> okay, you know, and I was the one who kept saying it will work, it will work, and uh, I, there was. No, you have to play the four three three, and I said no. But we, the, and then when we had to change the system again, I was the one that had to say it, it will work, it will work, it will work, and uh, I, I strongly believe that I don't, and I have to choose my words very very carefully also because uh, people mustn't think that I'm I'm a tinker man just because I want to. Mm -hmm. The first and foremost priority is to win football matches. We want to win. Um, but then, of course, there is a way that uh, even at Sundowns, you've got to win. And not necessarily just the, the, what the club speaks about in terms of its colours and, and what it represents from a, from a nickname perspective and from, from, from its association with Shushan and Piano. And it is there that's the club's history. And it's a history that belongs to many a great man who, who, who helped install that, like the uh, Scrimma Shawala, the late uh, Alex, uh, Ted Dumitru. These are people that came with, uh, with very, very, very solid values and they were ingrained into the club. And of course, um, there, there is that sort of way. But, but it's also a way, fortunately, that uh, being a coach that comes from the, the, the Sundowns Academy, and I was I was fortunate enough that I was in the academy at the right time because we had the Johan Cruyff Institute and we had coaches from Barcelona who who came in, and uh, it's a way that I I I I I could I could align myself with uh, not just not just uh, from a, from a technical perspective in terms of game understanding and the principles, but also from a soul perspective because. I I think I think I'm fortunate to come from a family that produced probably some of the greatest football players, and in that line, most of them were were players that uh, were creative and technically extremely gifted. Mm -hmm. And so I feel football that way. I feel I feel football in a in a in a certain way. And even though I didn't play in a, in, a, in an offensive position as a as a youngster, but I do feel football that way. I feel football in a in a way, and 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 I want the team that I am going to watch for ninety minutes to be a team that I enjoy watching, mm -hmm. and uh, a game of football that uh, I I'm happy to 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 be associated with. And I think that's that's probably uh, one of the things that 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 puts me in a position where. I'm never satisfied with the performance. I always think we can play better and I always think we can do certain things better, but 
this is uh, this is football. It can never be perfect. In those thirty six games you watched, what is it that you saw there that you said, you know what, no, 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 that like we we might have to look at a different way of playing. What was the what was the main outlier in all the games you watched? There were three very important things for for and, and these were things we spoke about. The first one was um, I was I, I was clear in my mind that we had a problem when we rotated. Mm. And of course then rotation became <sighs> an important topic that we had to discuss amongst the group. Mm. Uh, there are some technical details that uh, maybe it's not always very easy to, to talk about, but there were some things that I was uh, uh, extremely critical of the team about and we have discussed and, and, and I can say to you that I sit here today and I think we've done a very, very, very good job in, in, in not only rectifying but also trying to implement new, newer things uh, to develop and evolve the team because uh, we we had gotten to a point where, um, and even though we were, we, we, I think, still very, very good with the diamond because of our familiarity with the movements and, and the counter movements uh, that have to be in relation to each other. But 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 I think the the development and, and the evolution of, 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 of how we want to try to play and, and, and the schemes that we want to try to adopt mm. I think we we've we've done we've done relatively very well to 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 implement those. Yeah, and I think so far, <laughs> you like when I, when we first started and I asked you, you had to defend why you changed. But I think the the schemes and the the structure you're using now it defends itself because it took it took us to a final. It won us the AFL. We remain unbeaten in the league and. <laughs> We look like we'll come out of the we'll come out of the group stages of of the Champions League. And um, <laughs> when when I know we've been talking about like sitting down like this, so like I've, I was I was reading a few things. Like I, I read a lot of things that always took me back to I want to bring this up mm-hmm. <laughs> to coach you like because mm-hmm. of some of the things you were telling me. Mm-hmm. I remember when I asked you last season what was your favorite game, and you said the game against Morca Solo said mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And <laughs> I I went back to watch that game. And I was like, I wonder what the crazy, what the crazy guy likes about this game. Because yeah. from what I saw, it, we controlled that game from beginning to end. But yeah. what, what was your favorite thing about the match? We dominated it. Yeah. It wasn't a contest. Yeah. Yeah. I like games that we dominate, and I like games that we we don't give the opposition a lot of chances, and mm-hmm. we are in and around the box more, and we can attack the opponent with and without the ball. And that game against Swallows was one of the games that I thought... I had three very, very good games in my head that I watched and I still continue. I've probably watched more times than any other games and that was that game at Loftus. Mm. Uh, the Belouish Dad game away in Algeria I thought mm. was an almost perfect performance. My favourite game. Yeah, and al at home. Mm. Uh, 5-2 I thought was also an almost perfect uh, performance. Yeah. Yeah. And so those are the type of games that when I watch, uh, I think uh, that's the level. And then, and then maybe we are fortunate, but, but you guys are a little bit unfortunate because you, maybe you, do, you don't get access to, but our preseason games in the Netherlands were, were something else. Mm. Uh, against Go Ahead Eagles, we were incredible. Uh, we struggled a little bit, but the mentality, the the the, the intensity of, of our performance, and even though um, a lot of the players that played that match were not players that played for us regularly in the previous season, but was a was a very good test for 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 the squad and the depth in our squad. And I thought they were the players that played that game. I thought were very good. And then uh, the rest of the games for me were, were incredible against Gank. We were super. Um, so, so, yeah, I think I think we play some some great football, and to do what we've done. Uh, sometimes I sit back because because I, I I look at at things from that perspective, and I say to do what we've done uh, while trying to play the type of football that we try to play is not easy. Mm-hmm. And so, a huge compliment needs to go to this group of players because because uh, it's very easy to to bypass the the, the, the style of play. 
mm. and go directly for the result. Mm. Uh, it's it's the easier route, especially when there is a lot of pressure behind yeah. you to get the result. Mm. And also because of modern society, the modern society is not. I mean, this is why we're going into into a space of uh, this technological or artificial intelligence type of boom mm. and the revolution that it will create. And 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 I don't think uh, when I listen around and I with what I read and and what I see, I don't think the human race is ready for what is about to happen because because what is happening already is already a sign of of what's to come. And society is about efficiency and productivity. Mm. Uh, not too many people want to know what the thought processes were or what your intentions were, mm. whether your intentions were good or bad. What is important is the outcome. And that's why now we, robots are, are so so um, influential in, in getting more jobs and, and being created because they, they minimize that risk that human beings bring. And human beings will always bring the risk of error. You, you know what I mean? And, and, and so, so people don't want mistakes because mistakes cost you money. Uh, and and when it costs you money, then it affects the business. Mm. And so, if we can minimize mistakes, then we can minimize uh, financial loss or deficits. And then, of course, then we increase productivity. And if you can increase productivity, you can increase profit and efficiency of of, of the business. And so, Society has reached that point where that even now human beings, football players, athletes, are in a space where uh, mistakes are not tolerated. You know, and there's a there's a very very high demand for zero mistakes and 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 one hundred percent productivity, and which is not easy for for a footballer because uh, they are also mere human beings who who have uh, some form of uh, not just neurological influences on how they behave and the decisions that they make, but also from a, from a space where there are things that happen to them on a daily basis. They are human beings. Mm -hmm. And of course, that then also influences uh, how you perceive certain things that happen to you. And because that, that influences how you perceive what happens, it of course will influence what decision the, you then take. And, and, and then that emotional connotation, uh, good or bad, uh, influences once again whether or not you, you are effective or productive in a sense, which is what the robot doesn't give you. The robot is a robot and has no emotional connotation to nothing. Yeah. They have no feelings, they, but the human beings do. So, up until you get to that point, uh, and, and maybe that is why in Brazil their biggest cry at the moment is they've gone extremely Eurocentric, mm -hmm. and 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 there's the, the the one coach said to me he says, the question we've asked ourselves is, why is there no Brazilian in the top three football players in the world, mm -hmm. where we've always produced a Ronaldinho, a Kaká, a Ronaldo, mm -hmm. an Adriano, mm -hmm. a, a, a Robinho. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And and he, they say now maybe our best player is Neymar, but Neymar's not is not getting game time at, at PSG and mm. and because of injuries and all the things, uh, and which they also feel is is as a as a change to the role that he has now, he, he, where he has to play more of uh, a ten position, yeah. and now with limited space in between the lines, he gets a lot of contact, uh, which affect his. His, 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 his performances and his, output. and his output because he's, he's, he's injured most of the time. But, and then they've got Rodrigo, but their question is why have they, not, why have they s stopped producing these type of players? Mm. But it's because of where society is and, and, and this is why a lot of them are, are, are still hopeful that uh, Denise and Fluminense can, can really, really succeed because that's uh, Brazil is is the heart and soul of of of, of football. You mm. you get to that country and 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 even uh, a woman that's on the beach and enjoying herself and tanning <laughs> can tell you who's the best player at Flamingo, who's mm. the best player at Botafogo, mm. who's the coach, 
of 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 Flamingo, who's the coach, they can tell you things that mm. that maybe a lot of people who claim to follow football may not even know. <laughs> you know, so yeah. so so it was good to 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 be in that space and to be to be around those people. But essentially, I think I think that is where we are going, uh, and and I'm not so sure how football will will deal with that change. Next thing we see the coach wearing those VR goggles and getting information from the analysts when the game is on. <laughs> no, no, but it's possible. Um, mm. I had uh, cameras on my players uh, for heads uh, training mm. the other day. Uh, yeah, but and, and, and uh, when you try to see what they see, you, you start to understand some of the things. It's, 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 it's a lot more difficult than a lot of people think. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, whoever has uh, any one percenter that allows them to perform better than the opposition mm. probably stands a better chance to win the football game. And even though football is a little bit more dynamic and complex than what a lot of people think, mm. and probably the most dynamic and most complex sport, um, it is still very, very difficult for you to to try to move the game into a space where it's a, it's a, it's one plus one is two. It's very, very difficult. And now you have them wearing bulletproofs. <laughs> no, 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 they're not. <laughs> no, they're not bulletproof vests. They, yeah. yeah, they're just accessories that help yeah. us with the, with the conditioning and, and yeah. Yeah. Um. You spoke about uh, the. What about the parachutes? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yo, there's so much stress and sundowns. Yeah. <laughs> the coach is crazy. <laughs> but that's what you get. That's what you get. Um, yeah, you, uh, you and you have to buy them yourself. Yeah. You have to make sure they are there, and, uh, yeah. so people understand. Uh, and and that's the thing. And they get to training, and you say, "I'm playing Sundays." Yeah, they put uh, them. <laughs> Now I'm, in, now I'm from MV in my house to, to clock up in the I oh, use the parachute man. to avoid traffic. Yeah. And you, you, you spoke about our, our preseason camp in Holland. What, what, did, what informed um, going there? No, no, but I got to... There, with, when you start to talk about that first, is, um, you got to thank the club mm. for the support because I think it was quite a... Not that I think, but I know mm. it was quite an expensive exercise, mm. and uh, we've got to thank the club, uh, and in particular the chairman and the Motsipa family, the board, mm. for for assisting us with it, mm. um, and also the the work that was done by uh, the sporting director Fleming Berg, his assistant Ryan, and also our team managers, you know, Carrizo yeah. and Tammy, especially Tammy, who yeah. who used, uh, if you know, in the past. Because Tommy worked uh, at the PSL, and in the past, when you won the Asit Lali competition, yeah. you, you you always went to Holland or you went to, mm-hmm. and so over the years he had made a lot of contacts with these clubs, and mm-hmm. he was able to to put together a, a fixture and a yeah. schedule list that was extremely competitive with very very good teams. Mm-hmm. Um, and so before even speaking about what the the objective was. Uh, we've got to have, uh, thank the club and thank the people behind the scenes. You it's know, not a one man show. It can never be, mm. and um, and I think to be honest, it it helped us big time in where we are as as a team uh, because what we wanted to get was a higher level of competition that would that would uh, stimulate us to 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 break a little bit the barrier uh, and move out of a comfort zone. Mm. Uh, and and of course that's not just from a physical output and an intensity perspective, but mm. also from a technical tactical perspective where these teams are play a little bit faster and they see things a little bit quicker, mm. and and from a tactical perspective, all four of the teams that we played, who gave us different challenges and and different dynamics from a tactical perspective, mm. and that stimulates the team to get better, mm. and the harder the games are, the better it is. So. Uh, I think it was a fantastic uh, experience, but an experience that allowed us to 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 move in a direction that we want to move in, where eventually we want to be a team that is going to be part of the twenty twenty five Club World Cup. Yeah. That's the vision, and 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 we want to try to 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 make sure that we are 
uh, we are in a space where we we can have performances that are strong enough yeah. uh, with players that are strong enough to be able to perform at that level against the uh, European um, standard teams. Yeah. And how hard, how hard was it to, to start the season? Like How hard was it to, to flush out the previous season? Because it ended with such a... Uh, it, I mean, it was heartache at mm-hmm. Loftus. How hard was it to, to flush out that season and go into a new one? And I don't know for the players. I mm. don't know. Uh, I know what Naomi no, has said to me. He said to me that he thinks my team talks are completely different this season. Mm. He thinks I'm still carrying the pain mm. of, 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 of the semi-final defeat of last season's Champions League. Yeah. He, says, he says my team talks uh, in here. And, and, and I'm like that. I, I have these type of conversations with my players. Yeah. And Naomi no, said to me, he says he thinks... Uh, he thinks my team talks are, are motivated so I, by yeah. He thinks I've, I've got he, th- he thinks I've got a much a much more deeper rooted yeah. pain. Yeah. Uh, and I can say that I don't. I personally don't think I'm over it. Mm. Uh, I don't think I'm over it because I don't think we deserved to be knocked out. I think the results are clear. Mm. To be the only team to not lose. to not lose at that type of level of competition to play the type of football that we played, to beat the type of opponents that we played, including beating the team that eventually won the competition. Yeah. Uh, having played them twice and not having lost to them. Uh, and then to lose the way we lost, you know, also with, you know, with the away goals rule already, which you feel a little bit is a little bit unfair. Mm. Uh, the type of goals that we considered, you know, you feel a little bit like you, not only did you have a little bit of uh, bad luck because of the goals you considered, but you had no luck because of the chance that you created and some of the chances that Peter had and Shishi had, we, 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 especially in the first half, it could have been a different story. But, but of course, in uh, in defeats you've got to take the learnings. Mm. But also, I I am a, I'm a firm believer that you've got to take the pain yeah. because I think it is the pain that drives you to the next level. And uh, and uh, while while maybe. It's important to move on, uh, and we give ourselves twenty four hours. But I think, I think the pain still has to stay, yeah. because I think it's the pain that pushes you to the next level. And uh, um, I don't, I don't think as a team, because I don't think as the coach of the team, I've, I've, I've recovered from it. And yeah. and I think maybe the only thing that will will uh, will make amends is is winning the Champions League. Yeah. Um, but but um, that's also. It's not so easy to do. Of course. Uh, you are fighting principalities. You're, fr- you're fighting football heritage. Um, and the only way to do it is, is, is like what we've done now with the last couple of competitions that involve our, our African competitors is to always be there in the semifinals, in the finals, in the semifinals, in the finals. In the, you've did the, and, and this is now what, what needs to start happening. And then up until you, you become, look at Widat. We did. Uh, I think this was their eighth semi final in in the last nine African competitions, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll actually have been in a row, five, six, seven in a row semi final appearances, four, five cup final appearances in a row. So you've got to get there. You've got to be there. It's the same Real Madrid, Man City now over the last four or five years. Mm-hmm. They start to build Sevilla in the, with the Europa League. Uh, you, they start to build this heritage. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, you, it becomes very difficult to, to, to fight something that's deeply entrenched. You know? and, mm-hmm. and, and, that's, and I think that's stage two of, of, of developing this team is is making sure that the team is in semi-finals and finals of all the, the AFL and the Champions League. All the, that's stage two. Mm. And before you move to stage three and stage four and stage five, where by stage five you are competing, hopefully within two years' time, at the Club World Cup and, 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 and you are winning uh, and the Champions League also. You know. But, but it's, 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 it's a gradual process, which yeah. a lot of people don't understand. And maybe that is why... A lot of a lot of what we know football to be. I I personally never got involved in football for for anything else because except for the love of the game. Mm. I was I think day one, 
of being born, I probably was exposed to you to, to football. Probably, whether it was at my father's training session or, or a match. But I think the day I left the hospital, the first thing I probably was was exposed to was a football match or a football training session. And and so so I feel the game and I don't think I can be involved in the game if it has anything else except for its soul mm-hmm. and, and, and its heartbeat. And, and, the, and, and for me, the soul and the heartbeat of football is still enjoyment. Yes, mm-hmm. we've got to win. Mm-hmm. And, we've, and, and yes, I agree that times have changed and, and the game is about business. I agree. But I, think, but I think at the end, what a lot of us still forget is that it's still a game. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's a, it's a sport. It's still a game. I, I was asking uh, uh, when we were having this conversation because this is a very heavy topic in Brazil. Yeah. It is. And one of the things I asked was, do you think today Pep and Ateta would share a glass of wine together after a match? No chance. <laughs> it's too intense now. Yeah, the, but, the competitive... But, but you hear of how Wenger used to share a glass of wine with Ferguson after the match. You would hear how uh, there would always be a, a sporting bar at the, at the stadiums where the both teams would share and have uh, in the lounge and have uh, alcohol together and, 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 and create brotherhood and memories and, and, and friends, you know. But the game has become so intense and so, so aggressive in that space that it's, it's, it's a little bit beyond the space where at times the games are not even enjoyable you know <laughs> yeah. you know and 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 i still want to be involved in football for the sake of enjoyment i still do and it might be my my youthful exuberance and my naivety mm-hmm. um, still speaking uh, but but I, I i i want to watch a training session and enjoy it i want to watch a game and enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, and if I can't, then I, I, I'm never happy. Um, do you think, I remember when, in 2016, when we won the Champions League, I remember before this, we played the semi-final, we lost the MTN final. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just didn't want to dwell on, on, the, on the MTN semi-final this year. Yeah. Um, do you think also losing that semi-final just created the final uh, the, the final sorry yeah. losing the final in Devon yeah. um, I, I know where we lost that match by the way yeah. no one could not in Devon yeah. I, was, I, was, I came alone <laughs> 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 so do, do you think losing that final also um, took the edge to win the AFL uh, and much higher Good question, but difficult to answer. Mm. Because I would love to think that in a perfect world, the team that I would like to envisage and I think be part of as the coach, mm. I would love to have won the MTNA plus the, 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 the AFL. AFL. Yeah. So in my perfect world. Mm. And so that type of thinking doesn't give me the chance to say that losing inspired us to fight a little bit harder mm. to win the AFL. We must always fight harder no matter what. No matter what, it's our responsibility. We, 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 should, we should win the MTN8. Mm. And to be honest, we should have won it. Of course. Uh, and the number of chances we had and the dominance we had and even in, in the treacherous conditions. Mm the day before plus also on match day yeah. what we went through as a team i think we were still the better side over the duration of the match and then when it goes to the lotteries of the penalties of course then it's 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 a, it's anybody's game yeah. and even though you've got to congratulate pirates because ultimately they they won the trophy yeah. um, but in my heart I think we should have won it, and I think we should have done a little bit more. And even though it was under very difficult circumstances, you know, that Peter Shalulile was was uh, playing probably with one leg, but gave a one hundred percent. 
Uh, and I, this is what I say to the players, if you, if you give 100% of the 10% that you have on that day, if you have only 10% for me on that day, yeah. give me 100% of that 10%, 10%. And that's enough for me. Mm. But don't give me 4% when you can give me 10%. Mm. Uh, and if it's only 10%, 15%, 30% that you can give the team on that day, then you give 100% of that 30%. Mm. And, and, and this is what Peter could do. We, we, we were without Lucas Ribeiro. We had Mshishi playing a little bit in a different position. We had Maseko out. We had, we had quite a few situations. Lucas Ribeiro, Nasir had come back and then immediately felt huge discomfort the day before the game in the training session. And I remember on the way back to, to the hotel, Nasir breaking down and crying. So, so there was a, there was quite a lot, but, but of course, I think I think uh, the other side of that question is is maybe it did maybe it did fuel us a little bit more maybe it did, it did uh, God did use it for a greater purpose and, and um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's there's 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 the there's the coach in me who's a fierce competitor mm. that says I don't think it should be like that. But then there's the the Rulani in me, and the the Rulani, the coach, and the the Rulani, the the person are completely different people, and they are always at loggerheads, mm -hmm. uh, always. Mm -hmm. um, but but I think I think I always want to try to to be driven by by uh, fierce sporting competitive mindset but also guided by human values mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and very good human values that um, my late grand, my mother and the people who raised me would be proud of you know because mm -hmm. I try to to still conduct my way myself in a way that will will not make me only a good coach but a, a good person Mm. And I don't always succeed because I'm human. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I make mistakes and I, and I probably make more mistakes than a lot of people that I know. Mm -hmm. I've got a lot more failures than a lot of people that I know. But it's because I embrace those. Um, and I use those to, to better myself that I'm able to accept them. Mm. And, 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 uh, and uh, that failure of not winning the MTN8, uh, although it hurt, is probably not the one that hurts the most because uh, there is a consolation of, of the performance because I thought the performance was very, very, very good. Yeah. Um, going to, to the AFL, um, it, it, at the beginning, personally, I was like, I, I don't want to feel that hurt of, of the Champions League. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I, I, I'm, so I'm hoping it doesn't set the tone mm. for, for, the, for the Champions League. And then when we win it, I'm like, now I want it to set the tone <laughs> for the Champions League. And now it, it takes me back to, to the semi final, um, second leg against Al Ahli. Yeah. Um, you, the team had a huge moment where. After the final whistle, you all huddled up and yeah. you, you, you told them yeah. how all these teams mm. that we've beaten yeah. in the past three seasons yeah. are the teams that took us out of the Champions League. Yeah, yeah. And after that moment, I was like, there's no way we're not winning this. Yeah. <laughs> Did you feel in that moment that the team needed to hear that for, for us to, to win the whole thing or... Do, do you feel in that moment that I have to bring these guys back into this thing so that they are switched on from here up until we go play the final? Um, um, no, I can't say I, I, I no, I can't say I, I felt it. Uh, but I, what I can say to you is I try to be the coach that the team needs at that specific mm -hmm. moment. Yeah. And I think the journey and the evolution of the team and the journey within the season needs a different character of a coach at different parts of the season. Uh, and I think that moment needed uh, more encouragement. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I think a more aggressive approach on it uh, of saying, but, but it's right in front of you. Uh, 
which which I also think was something that I also failed to do in the Champions League semi final against Widat. It, I think the personality I had adopted for the f- second leg of the Widat game was not the personality of the coach that they needed for that match. They needed a coach to, to get them over the line. Because uh, physically, and it being so late in the season, uh, and, and, and the pressure and, 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 and how difficult things were, uh, uh, they needed they needed someone a bit m- a personality of someone a bit more aggressive mm-hmm. and i wasn't not aggressive enough and and in hindsight i look and i say that's one mistake i'll never repeat ever again that when i do feel that the team needs a push mm-hmm. then i've got to give a push and some of the greatest in the world and you can go into whatever space and greatest leaders from political uh, great revolutionaries like uh, nelson mandela uh, the late Tata and the late president of the country, uh, when there was uh, the struggle for apartheid, he believed that there would be freedom in the country. And he believed that there would be freedom and, and equality for everybody without a civil war or any th- or a bloodbath. Mm. And many uh, people thought, no, this guy was crazy, hence why Um Konto Esizwe was then formed. Mm-hmm. In anticipation for what was to come. To fight for our fire. Exactly. Uh, and what happened after 1994? The country got uh, a democratic, democratically elected uh, president, but also in the sense, in that, in that sense, is 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 uh, is uh, you look at people like Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan. These are people that that uh, pushed others to believe in things that they could and, 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 and Albert Einstein, people would change. Uh, Pep Guardiola, you've seen in, in some of the series that we watch on, on Prime, mm. you see sometimes some of our, his team talks and how aggressive they are. Um, and, and so, Jose Mourinho. So some, sometimes it's, a, it's, a, it's you, you, have to, you have to get people to believe in certain things and to see things that they can't see in themselves. Mm-hmm. And for themselves, and 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 that's and that's what I think ooh, happened in that moment, mm-hmm. is that I got a reminder of, of, the fact that they need they need to, op- opportunities in life do not come every single year, mm-hmm. and when it is your opportunity and success works on a, uh, on operates on a queuing system. I always say that, and when when you're in the queue. And then you get to become in the front of the queue. You've got to seize your opportunity and, and receive what you've been patiently waiting for in the queue. And, 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 and not say, oh, I forgot that uh, I, 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 I didn't do something so you can go in front of me. Because if you do, then you have to wait probably an even prolonged time. Mm-hmm. And you don't know how long. It's like uh, waiting in the queue for, for the bank or at the bank or at a, a grocery store. If I'm in front and I've been waiting for the last and the people who've been coming in front of me have had trolleys and with lots of groceries inside mm. and I've got to wait and wait and wait and wait. And then all of a sudden I say, hey, I left uh, margarine or butter, mm. you know, and I don't have it. And now I've got to wait for cans now to go in front and then pay. And I don't know what's in Ken's trolley and how long I've got to wait for cans to be done with the cashier. Mm. And, and that's success. Success works and operates on a queuing system. First, you've got to be patient and diligent in waiting for your turn. People like Oprah Winfrey call that the meantime. Mm. Is what do you do in the meantime? And a lot of us get uh, disgruntled and uh, give up during the meantime. Mm. But it is actually in the meantime that you... You, you need to sharpen. You sharpen and you, you, you get you get yourself and you prepare yourself for what is to come. Mm. But it's not always that easy, is it? Because uh, we are impatient as a people and society is not a society that uh, uh, has time anymore and, and or value for time. And, 
and also society has changed. The things that used to be on the periphery have come now into becoming the primary. Mm -hmm. And the things that used to be primary have now become things of the periphery. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you've got to accept it. And that is not just only forget, forget football, but that's just generally where life is at the moment. Yeah. I got a, a, a huge wake-up call during the AFL because um, <laughs> I, I got to work for the AFL to capture their social media stuff. And the game was different. <laughs> From watching the game on the stands and yeah, watching yeah. on TV, and then now being uh, part of it, eye to eye with the players and the movements. Like I, I think I struggled for the first twenty minutes. I didn't know what to capture because they said like capture like all the best moments. And sometimes I'm behind Ronza. The mm. best moment happens that time. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm in the middle. And I'm like I have to wait for it. Yeah. But I got a, a, a huge wake up call. And even in the game against Al Ahly, yeah, I was yeah. I was behind you, and I was like, how does this guy see this? <laughs> because in the presence, you always says, I need to watch the game. And mm. now it makes sense to me because yeah. you don't see much there no. because you you won't see the movements properly. No. You won't see... It's it, it, it's 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 super intense. Yeah. Very, very, very intense. And I say to people that uh, if you... If you are only a, a, an, 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 a, an armchair Sundown supporter, you will not appreciate the type of football we play. Mm. And, and when I say armchair, I mean, even, even if you come only to Loftus to watch. Oh, yeah. uh, it, the Sundowns games, you've got to watch over and over again. <laughs> yeah, I, watch, I watch each game maybe three times. Mm. The first time I watch it, and, 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 and time permitting, it's not always like that. Oh, yeah. but, but I come sometimes to work. And I've got heavy eyes and red eyes, and I, and the players ask me, I, I, "You don't sleep. What is wrong with you? You're gonna collapse one day on the pitch <laughs> because you look you look jaded and tired." But yeah. but I, I I I have to do it because the first time I watch it is I watch it as a supporter, mm. and the question I ask myself immediately after watching ninety six ninety seven minute the first time is, "Did I enjoy watching it?" Mm. If if I was a supporter of this club. Would I say I got value for money? Mm. That's the first question I ask myself. And if the answer is yes, then I am happy because mm. I first and foremost, before being the coach of this club, I am a supporter. Mm. I've fallen in love with the team. Mm. Uh, and, 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 and love is very dangerous because it's, it creates a lot of cognitive biases. And this is why I have quite a lot of people watching Mamelodi Sundowns for me, mm. uh, and not people who work for Sundowns. Mm. I've got quite a few friends who are in various parts of the world, and who do this thing for a living, mm. uh, who do analysis for a living, and who get to watch Sundowns for me, and I and I get to hear their opinions about what they think about the performance of the team. Mm. Uh, and then I watch it the second time, and the second time I watch it is to is to do corrections. And that takes me quite some time because I go minute by minute and trying to find things that individuals can do better and, and the team can do better. And of course, then you've got, because immediately the next morning, the players have got to come in and there must be a review. Mm -hmm. uh, and the review is based on not individual tactics or individual things, but necessarily team concepts and models and principles. Mm. So, so there's no gray areas in, 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 in the video clips that we show. This is how we go about doing uh, A, B, C. This is how we press. Mm. And this is how we had planned to press from a tactical agreements perspective. Mm. And did we do it? No. And why? Mm, this is how we planned to build up. Well, why couldn't we succeed? Or why did we succeed? And, and so we find certain things that we've got to work on, not only just to develop the model, but also things that we were not truly satisfied with and where we think we could have applied a little bit more, be it, mm. be it aggression or intensity or whatever it may be that may have lacked in that specific phase from a collective perspective. Mm. And then I watch it the third time too with the players yeah. when we do uh, corrections. So I have the players with me and we, they have, have got to bring their notes. I've got to bring my notes and we sit and we do the corrections. So... Every single game I watch almost three times. Hmm. My, my, one of my favorite moments during the AFL was um, going into the second half in the semi-finals against Al-Akhli. Um, 
because I was working, yeah. I was walking behind you and Tabelo, Tabelo Maseko, and the score was still zero zero yeah. there. And I, I heard you so clearly. Yeah. You said to him, get into the space, yeah. it will open up. And when I look at the goal he scored, yeah. <laughs> I was like, we, so we, we have, it's, it's real, but it's like a joke we have on Twitter. We'll say, Coaching is happening at Mamelodi Sundance. It's a real thing, but now it's like a thing that we throw out there. Uh, I, I don't think, I, like, I got, I, I, I got like a first class seat I, into I, seeing that. I spent <laughs> five minutes of the ten minutes I have at half time mm. addressing Capello Maseko mm. and how he needs to play. Mm. Because he was, uh, he was doing a lot of good things. Mm. Like against Chiefs, uh, I think Tapelo Maseko. I think he's he's going to be, uh, and I and I hope, I really really hope we can keep him for a little bit longer because he's young and he's. Yeah, I think he needs one more. To, I <laughs> so funny. I had a friend of mine uh, the other day, uh, and he used to be a football player. He played as a striker, and 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 we met. We met someone who works in government, and he he's a former, he's a former uh, very very staunch uh, ANC stalwart, and mm-hmm. he, who wanted, he we we met. I was with this friend, and he stopped us, and he said, "I want I want my nephew to be coached by you." And so my friend said, "Actually, I would want my son also to be coached by you." And I was like, "But but why?" He says, "Well, uh, the last seven of the last eight footballers of the season have been coached by you. And when I and when he counted, he was actually right. Of, sure. of the last eight footballers of the DSTV or, or EPSA Premier League oh, yeah. footballers of the season, seven of those I had coached or had a bit of influence in their, in their careers. Oh, yeah. And so even with Maseko there against al there were certain things where he... He he didn't position himself properly, and I wanted him in a specific position, which was the position uh, that he scored the goal in. <laughs> and uh, I asked him to stay a bit more patient in that position because mm-hmm. he would he would drift out of that position if the ball did not come to him, or if he felt he was he was marked a bit tighter. And and all I was trying to say to them is that get into those positions but keep the ball a little bit longer in those positions because those positions have got goals uh, and they don't call them the assist zones for nothing or the golden zones for nothing uh, there isn't a, a huge hype about this half space for nothing there is some form of logic behind it but but it needs technical qualities uh, and and also psychologically you've got to be a bit more patient to play and that's why I think Mshishi is, is is probably the best at 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 at, at finding this space and, and 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 camping in that space being being planted there and not making too many movements and waiting for the ball to to for us to move the ball so that the ball can find you and then you can use a very good first touch, maybe your body feints to try to solve the situation, uh, and that's what that's what I was trying to get across. But fortunately, it worked, uh, and some of these things work, some of them don't work. I remember <laughs> even the final of the AFL, the second leg, the goal Mudiba scores. Yeah, the week leading up, Ronwin actually speaks about it in the Sundowns podcast. Yeah, with the names, how in we Lombo, were in Lombo. Yeah. And how leading up to that week, uh, I I spent I spent hours watching the first leg of the the, the final, and uh, I remembered even how against Pedro, uh, three seasons ago in the quarter final we lost the first leg because I let the team down, because when I was watching I I knew and it was it was I think. If it wasn't the uh, Petro versus Widat in the group stages, it was Petro versus Zamalek. But it was it was one North African, and I think it was Widat. And Widat away from home pressed Petro with three. And at home they pressed Petro with four. And and I saw the difference. I saw the difference it made to their build up and how disruptive their their press was to the build up schemes. But I was too afraid. To go away from home and press with three, uh, 
And I, I created the biggest mistake, tactical blunder that I will never forgive myself for. And that week leading up to the second leg, that came up to me. And I watched and I watched and I watched and I watched the game and I watched it over and over again. I was obsessed. I spent sleepless nights. And uh, I came up with a, with, a, with a pressing scheme, which was a little bit crazy. Uh, uh, but I knew in my mind it would work. You know, I, was, I, I had a strong conviction. But here I was with, with, with a couple of days to go, maybe two days, uh, to prepare because I built a team and then from, from principles to sub-principles to sub-sub-principles. And as we get closer, I divide, especially if we've got a hotel week and we've got some time, I divide this, the sub-principles and the principles into training topics. I don't necessarily have training topics, but I have training uh, sessions that address certain aspects of our game because it's, it's, it's a lot more global. The one phase interlinks with the other. So I never separate the foot attack, defense, transition. Mm -hmm. But of course there are uh, drills and, 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 and sessions that are aimed at specifically focusing and zooming in on certain things. Uh, and so we, work, we were working on the press. And fourth ball comes and these players are just not getting it. Fifth ball comes and these players are just not getting it. And, and then there I am going mad. So I, and I was like, right guys, let's just do the four foot two diamond press. And by the way, it's the same press y'all didn't want before and you were not convinced that it would work. And I had to do it over and over and over and to convince you that this is, and now you've fallen in love with it. You don't want to let it go. And I'm trying to show you that this specific opponent and this nature and the result and everything else around it needs this so anyway, let's practice the one you want. And then the, I, I, I had the senior players say, no, 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 we'll practice this one that you Is want. that the moment when Zungu said, Asla Yes, Asla, no, Zungu, no, Zungu was the one, Asla chance. And Zungu was in the opposite team, actually. He was not even in the, 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 the team that I was focused on. Mm. And Zungu came and was very strong. Even Ronza and Mshishi, uh, they were like, ah, 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 this is practice. And Uzungu was like, ah, smamelen lumuntu, I send zen lenta at the CNs. And how does football work? That the goal we score, Mudiba's goal, is exactly from that pressing scheme that we worked on, mm -hmm. maybe more than 15 times, mm -hmm. because they were just not getting it by the fifth, fourth, fourth time. And I was, and I was really, really ready to give up on it. <laughs> <laughs> I must tell you, I was so frustrated. I was really ready to give up on it because I showed the clips. I cut the clips, I showed them, and I, I moved the people on the animations and the things. We went to the pitch, we, we, we simulated, and, 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 and I was getting so much resistance, you know, and it, from, from the players, you know. And I don't think it was intentional. Mm. Um, I think it was just part of the process of detraining and then retraining. And I, 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 I wanted to retrain something, but I forgot that you've got to go through the phase of detraining first before you can train something new mm. and new concepts. Because, because when there is pressure, and it was a pressure week, yes. when there is pressure, psychologically, uh, the brain does fall back to default settings and the things that it is accustomed to doing. And... Um, and yeah, it was, it was, it, yeah, but that's football. You know, that's the, that's, that's the beauty of coaching. Sometimes you get them right mm. and you feel good and, and there's, there's a feel good factor about it, but there are things that you get wrong and many that you get wrong. And sometimes you, sometimes you are, you're a genius, but sometimes you are, a, you're <laughs> an idiot and, and there's a very thin line between the two. There's a quote by Douglas MacArthur that says, you, you are remembered for the rules you break. Yeah, and, 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 and I think someone went on to elaborate on that quote and said, it's easier to say sorry than it is to ask for permission. Mm. So to ask for permission to break the rules, is, you, you, it's, it's much harder than to just break that rule and then say, oh, I'm so sorry. It's a little <laughs> bit easier. Yeah, and, and every time we, we, we speak here, Kutlo always says, as much as you can have winning momentum, you can also have losing momentum. If I, I, I honestly think... And it's easier to say now because we won. I honestly think if we had lost the AFA final, it was going to break me mentally. I was not going to look forward to the Champions League. Yeah, that word momentum is... Uh, we are... We are 
and and when I say we, I say uh, the technical team. This uh, this word momentum, mm. I don't <laughs> like crazy <All> right. because <laughs> it, no, it's a it's a it's a it's a discussion topic mm. in the bus, in in on the dinner table, breakfast table with the coaches, uh, and particularly myself, Coach Michael, and uh, the head of performance or conditioning coach. Uh, uh, Matthias, yeah. we we are we are trying to define what what, what momentum is, mm. and 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 we once got to the point of saying then if if it is a way of energy moving in a certain direction, then of course there should be winning momentum and and losing momentum. There should be positive momentum and negative momentum, mm. but we still don't know what the real definition of momentum is. Mm. <laughs> This is the topic for another day. No, it is. It is. It, no, I tell you, yeah. maybe this is six months into the season. Yeah. And uh, and if you ask them, and even Coach Mangwa has been involved in this discussion. In fact, even Coach Wendell, we've had this discussion so many times. Mm. And in fact, to a point where we said we ban each other from mentioning the word momentum. So they will, they, will, they will hear me mention the word momentum. No, we ban each other from yeah. mentioning the word momentum in each other's presence because. We are, we, we, are, we are yet to, to define what really, from a sporting sense, momentum really, really is. Is it psychological or is it energetic? Or both. Maybe both. Or maybe even or both. both. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe even both. Mm-hmm. And is it something that you can control? Can you control momentum? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can control it. Yeah, but but how do but how do the greats then stay at that level where momentum is swinging in their direction, and they are winning and winning? And you can go to these people. They are they are th- these people like uh, Djokovic, for an example. Yeah, like where he just can't stop winning. He just can't stop winning. Mm. But I think it 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 goes back to uh, I think I mentioned something when I was like in basketball they always talk about reps. It doesn't matter how you how you feel or what you do. You must keep doing the same thing. You know, Steph Curry shoots a thousand. He says a thousand three points, and then like you'll break the record. They'll say he's hit seventeen in one game. You you won't hit the seventeen if in, in how how many do you miss in a thousand? Right, there was a clip that trended where Steph scored. No, how many threes were it? Was it hundred and three in a row? Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 I I say I always say to the players that. No, and I say this sometimes, yeah. and they laugh at me. I say, in my next life, I would like to, if I can, ask God if this thing does ha- exist, the way you get to heaven. Yeah. And they say, you have a chance to come back. As anything you wish. Yes, and God says, what would you like to be? I would like to be a football, uh, a basketball coach and not a mm. football coach. Yeah. Because I think mentally that sport is completely, complete, the demands. Uh, and, and maybe it's because I follow these basketball coaches more than I follow the sport itself. Mm-hmm. Like I would, I would, I would just, I would just watch conference after conference of a basketball coach, like uh, Popovich for an example, mm-hmm. then watch his team play. Yeah. I don't know if you understand because I get to, to to get the insights and 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 those type of documentaries. You know, uh, Doc Rivers is someone also now that I'm extremely fascinated. Yeah. With. He's incredible. His 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 thought processes. His his way of working, his, 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 how he, he, he manages talented athletes, you know. Yeah. So, so the sport itself is not a sport that really, really uh, entices me. Mm. I'm, not a, I'm not a person that will wait for 3 a.m. in the morning <laughs> for a basketball game. But it's not everyone who's caught for that. Exactly. Yeah, it's no, it's crazy you're, people like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vila, <laughs> Tembazwane, they love yeah. basketball to that yeah. sense. Ah, those ones join me when it's the finals. But, <laughs> but me? But, 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 yeah. but say there's a Copa Libertadores game of course you're at 3 a.m. Yeah. I am going to watch. Mm. You know? Mm. So, 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 so I'm, not, I'm not so obsessed, but I would love to come back as a basketball coach. Mm. And understand the psyche and the the and and and, and the mental intensity it takes mm. to to be at that level every single game. Uh, the Jordan, uh, I mean, you can uh, you can go you, most of them, are, and the ones that really 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 make it uh, to a level success is the same clues. Yeah. So, what what do you say? 
Yeah, but it's it's but you you're right. It's more mental more than anything. Um, the the clip I sent you the other day, yeah. Phil Jackson was talking about when Kobe was twenty two. Unbelievable. And he he would always nudge Kobe in a way that would make him feel like, of course you can't do that yeah. because you are not Michael. I coached yeah. Michael and yeah. Michael did this, yeah. so he would always make sure that Michael is around. So he would bring him in like and they would have dinner. And in in the clip he was talking about where they yeah, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. he says the. Him and Michael waited for Kobe after after practice. Kobe came after speaking to the media. He said the moment he walked in, he said, Michael, I can beat you one-on-one. On one. No. So it's like, he, <laughs> you can even see the energy he's mm. coming in with. Mm. So I think it's more mental more than anything. And that's why one of my favorite games to play with you is showing you the parallels between yeah. basketball and, and, and football. Yeah. Because if you look at someone like Steve Kerr, yeah. Steve Kerr, Right now, yeah. you will look at someone like Xavi Alonso. Yeah. It's similar. Because yeah. the quote about Mourinho saying Xavi will be the best coach because yeah. he played like under me, Benitez, Carlo and Shiloh, It's but the same as Steve. Steve Kerr played under Phil Jackson with Michael Jordan. Complete under coach Popovich, Popovich with Tim Duncan. 100%. And now he's coaching Steph Curry. So, <laughs> so he knows, he, he almost, he can say to Steph when it's tough to say, you know, Michael used to, the moment he says that, Steph thinks has to think I have to be better than it's it's I said I said something very similar along the lines uh, someone was asking me how do you manage to deal at, as a young coach how do you manage to deal with such a star studded mm-hmm. uh, son asked him I said I don't know but I can tell you that um, um, I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not frightened by the status or the mm-hmm. name because I was I was a child and my grandfather, my, my grandfather played for Pirates, so there was that legacy. Mm-hmm. My uncle was Jomo Sono. So it, when everybody would say, Nangu Jomo, Nangu Jomo, when he was coming into our street, yeah. for me, it would be, this is the guy I've seen without clothes on. This is the guy, <laughs> this is the guy yeah, that I've slept on his... I, I was human form. I mean, yeah. really. So, and, and, and Jomo's level is by far... A level of 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 greatness and, and, and legacy from a from a legendary type of perspective, mm. the type of footballer that we've produced, he's gone on to achieve many 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 great things. Mm. So so I I I was fortunate enough that I also grew up with that type of background where yeah. there was family and and by the way we had we had a lot of superstars when my father was growing up and he was close to uh, a player like Eric September I remember. Coming to my house so many times, Dr. Kumalo, Edward Modale, and they were heroes. They were superstars mm. at that time. And when they saw their cars or they walked on the streets, the, we, the kids would stop playing. The, the women would come out of their houses just to see the, 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 the guys that were sitting in the shabin having beers would come out to, and come to my house to, to, to meet Eric September, for an example, who was a top striker at that time for Mamelodi Sundowns. Mm. You know, so so I was fortunate enough that from a very very young age I was exposed to superstars, mm. and so when 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 I've got to deal with with the Sundowns players and even even before with the Pirates players, I never felt any form of uh, inferiority complex mm. because because I was I was marinated if you like mm. amongst greatness you know mm. so. It helps. Yeah. Um, you know, I know you don't like speaking about uh, individual players. Yeah. But I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm barking death by a thousand cuts. Mm. One day I'll get you to, to mm. properly speak about individual players. Mm. Um, as we close this chapter of the, 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 the first six months of the league, <laughs> I, I, I forgot who I was joking with. I was, when I said, River scored our first goal of preseason. It's going to be a good season. <laughs> Him coming back from injury this season uh, and playing as as much as he's playing. And you know the thing with the River is... I don't even know how to explain a player like River. He's like he's like a relic of the past. You know how you speak about like the Brazilians and whatnot and talking about the soul of football? You can't speak about the soul of football and not speak about a player like River. Like River, even the players call him the system. 
you know what I mean? Like yeah. it tells you the type of player he is. Uh, he's not the fleshy players. No. Yeah, he's those type of players where they say no. you, you 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 watch the game and don't see river, but mm. see or will watch river and you see the game. Hundred percent. Do you think his influence on the the way we are playing this season? Um, do do you think him being being fit and being and studying the the amount of games he started this season, do you think that has been like a big help for, for us and also for the schemes that you, the technical team is yes. developing? Yes, but but I want more. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he, 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 he can do more, he must mm. do more, uh, he knows that. Mm. Uh, we were in Pulukwane in, in, in camp uh, and I can reply if, because then you, you are 100% right. Publicly, I don't like speaking about individuals. Mm -hmm. I don't like speaking about myself mm -hmm. as the individual. Mm -hmm. Publicly, anyway. Yeah. Uh, and so I don't do that also with the players. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I do have exceptions, particularly when I've spoken to the individual already. Mm -hmm. And so I can tell you that Riva knows that I have, I have a great appreciation for his contributions this season because they've been a lot more than the previous seasons. Uh, but the appreciation stems from also a greater appreciation to the entire team for what they've, they've done because what each and every single individual in our team has been able to do has been incredible. And it leaves one sh very short of crying because you become very emotional when you sometimes think about the amount of sacrifices, support that you, you've received, not just from the players, but also from the technical staff and, and the rest of the football club. But, but I've had a chance to have one-on-one -on -one meetings in Pulukwane and revise one of the players where I have said he has to do more. And, uh, and, uh, and I, as much as I fully agree with you, but, but there, there is more that can be done. Mm. And now we are in we are in January. The Ofcon is, yeah. is is about to end, and um, our players did so well uh, in, in the national team. I I think I don't think anyone thought Buffalo would go as far as they did. We we, we were talking about the way you don't want to mention momentum yeah, winning yeah. and losing. Yeah, yeah. But what you spoke about um, the growth you had to have between losing the semi-final against Widat and going into the AFL final. Um, our players getting to a semi-final at national level, playing semi-finals, uh, playing a final in the MTN8, uh, playing a final AFL in the same season, playing a semi-final, playing for third place, and now going into, into, into um, the Champions League. We are going to have to play the the net bank up very soon. Are you are you happy with <clears throat> our players being in those type of <laughs> gaining the I, I'm I'm trying to stray away from making you talk about what you don't want to talk about. Yeah. But those type of things how much of a help is it? I don't know if you if you've noticed but I've deliberately tried to stay away from Afcon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've had, uh, and I must, I must, uh, um, I can even show you. I've had several inquiries mm. from Sky Sports News, uh, BBC, yeah. ESPN Africa. Mm. Uh, there was a, a French, I can't pronounce the the publication, but yeah. there was a French publication that wanted to do some form of interview about yeah. the Sundowns players and the Sundowns coach and his influence. In the national team and uh, <laughs> and uh, and and I've normally I would even do work for Supersport, mm -hmm. but I I I I refrained from even working as a pundit. Mm -hmm. I only did one game, mm -hmm. and you ran away. And I I <laughs> no I didn't run away. I yeah. I, I I made a, a a conscious and very sober decision not to not to not to speak about uh, a lot about Afcon and not to mm. have a lot of quotes about Afcon and, 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 and only from one perspective is I do not want to be 
the guy that steals the limelight from the coach, Hugo Boros. I've got to respect him as a colleague. And there are times when I said this to, to someone very close to me, they said, but, but, but he doesn't deserve that treatment to be from you because he doesn't give you that treatment. And, and I say, two wrongs don't make a right. Uh, uh, and if sometimes you've got to teach people how to treat others yeah. by treating them differently, then so be it. And, and, and I did that, you know, out of respect for him and out of respect for the players mm. because um, I know them as human beings and I know them as footballers and I know them very well and because I'm very close and I take up a lot of time in their lives. Uh, I speak to them mm. <laughs> during the AFCON probably maybe the same amount of time that I speak to them when they are with me uh, and we speak about their performances and, and leading up to the games, trying to motivate and, and encourage and support. But that's, that's the least that I can do in that space. Mm. But out of respect for, for Hugo Bros, all I want to say for, about the AFCON is congratulations to the national team. You know, congratulations to him and his technical team for for guiding this team to to a third place finish. Mm. Uh, um, do I have disappointments? Yes, there yeah, are disappointments. Like for for an example, I'm disappointed Mudiba didn't play midfield. <laughs> it, that is one one of my biggest disappointments of Afcon. You yeah. know, I I wish Mudiba had played midfield. Uh, I don't know. You can't ask me for who because I can't give you that answer publicly. Yeah. But but it is a disappointment of mine. Uh, so you're never going to play him at left back ever again? No, 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 I didn't say... It. I, no, he, he can play left back. Yes. But a specific left back against specific opponents. Mm. But if you think of the goal we've conceded, uh, Sundowns versus Widad with Etihad Allah coming to the far post mm. and scoring, you saw it in the AFCON. <laughs> <laughs> no one knew where you were going the no. moment you said it, yeah. No, you, you, saw, yeah. It, you saw it at AFCON. Mm. And so that thing is not, uh, it's not happening coincidentally. Yeah. It's showing you that uh, there are certain deficiencies. Mm. And you can't always expose certain deficiencies, especially those type of deficiencies, mm. uh, at a higher level because then you'll get, you'll get punished. Yeah. Um, uh, but also over, uh, over and above that, I do feel that he is a much, much better player in, 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 in areas closer to the opposition box. He's been very good as an eight. He, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got, uh, he's, he's got, Marcelo Bielsa says it's a, he's a midfield. We, we are very fortunate at Sundowns. I think we've got some, some very good number eights. Mm. Marcelo Bielsa says uh, there's one position and he, he, he mentions uh, Kevin De Bruyne a little bit. He says, he says, eights that understand both directions of the pitch are very rare to find. Mm. And Mudiba, because of also his influence and his background of having played as a left back, mm. understands the negative direction of the pitch. But I think his background as a, as a left winger offensive player in positions, and he's played those positions for aces, for an example, under Mushin. Yeah. When he plays in the eight, he, which is a position where you've got to have a bit of balance on both the positive and the negative parts of the pitch, yeah. Mudiba understands both directions of, of play. Mm. Uh, and then that means you can get a little bit more out of Mudiba. Mm. Um, so that's my, it's one of my, my only uh, things because I think we could have seen a little bit more from Mudiba. And even though I think he was also one like the others that uh, had a very, very good tournament. In yeah. fact, I was even, I must say to you, like uh, Mahopa was very surprised by his level, uh, to be honest. And I, I'm not... I'm I'm being very serious. I thought I thought he surpassed my expectations. Yeah. And um, and so, from a collective perspective and the 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 performance and the achievement of our national team, I think will have uh, a greater influence not just on Sundowns, but on on Bulukwane City for an, for an example because yeah. Apollis comes back and has an experience of a world class tournament, yeah. a winning mentality. Uh, pressure and, 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 and success and he's tasted this yeah. and hopefully he goes into Pulukwane City and this rubs off into his teammates 
valley motor goes back to Amazulu, and there's 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 some form of uh, uh, influence from yeah. from this great experience. Mm. Pirates the same with with their players. Uh, Super sport the same with Goss and Sianda Kulu and, and and many others. So hopefully there's a greater benefit not just from a from an energy perspective of reviving south african football and we can get more people to believe that the game is not dead in south africa and yeah. so we can come back and support uh, these football players in our domestic league and i think ultimately hopefully there's a there's a there's a backdrop yeah uh, that comes out of this incredible achievement mm. but i also think for the for the clubs that the players will uh, will go back to hopefully i also think they hopefully there's a there's some form of um, benefits that that holistically as a country we can we can get out of get out of this ex- experience and it was a a, a great achievement um and and one that we've got to celebrate and 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 uh, and give and give uh, huge huge compliments to the entire squad and and, and the technical team led by uh, Hugo Bruce and, and and then of course also the football association. But how good have the games been also? The, the quality of, of this upcoming tournament is the best I've seen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and 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 again we also then have to give credit, credit to. Uh, the CAF leadership and Dr. Patrice Mutsipe, uh, all all 54 uh, CAF presidents or association presidents, they've also got a, uh, the, the organizing committee, the quality of the fields mm-hmm. in Ivory Coast, you know, the organization. Uh, so, um, great tournament and hopefully there's a, there's a lot that goes back into, into benefiting the different associations and the different domestic leagues and, and, and African football as a whole. Yeah, I'm also hoping there's a good spillover of the uh, how they handle AFCON. I hope it spills over into the, the Champions League as well. Um, we, we've had, we had a yeah, very good AFL. AFL was... The level was... was, was the level was... was yeah. VR well. yeah, yeah, with VR. No, how yeah. good has VR was... Uh, this is the best use of VR I've seen. Um, yeah. com- Emotional. Emotional, but, but especially, <laughs> yeah. especially for us against Nigeria, uh, pff, very good. Use. I mean, when, in even fact, against Morocco, even that was against very good Morocco, use of VR. No, hundred uh, yeah. percent. And okay. we've we've really benefited from it, to be honest. <laughs> and in a good way. And in a good way, and not cheating. Yes. You can't go into that space, you know. <laughs> so, so it's been it's been it's been very good, and and yeah. that's to the refereeing committee. Again, I'm told I think uh, Victor Gomez runs that from Kef now. He's a oh. South African, so you you've got to give. Uh, heads off again to another South African who's doing incredible things on the continent. The always is Victor Gomes in, in the Champions League is a different... When he has the Kev badge, it's a different animal. Yeah, but, but, but South Africans are doing incredible things. No, for real. At for the real. moment, for real, for uh, real. Uh, the Springboks, mm. uh, Trevor Noah hosting. Yeah, the I mean, Grammys. I, mean, I think I mean, it's the third or fourth year. I mean, again, hosting. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, the, that lady Tyler. Yeah. She won uh, an award. Best African act. I, I mean, really. World, world. Yeah. Uh, so I saw someone writing that South Africa is the woman she thinks she is. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I fully agree. At the moment, I fully agree. South Af- I mean, uh, South Africa uh, has a has a judge in probably the most the highest court. Uh, no, it was was announced just now. I just yeah. I just forgot the name. Uh, South Africa with um, Mam Naledi Pando. Yeah, it go, uh, no, and yeah. and robustly goes into the highest court to yeah. and 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 sweeps the floor. Yeah. So big ups to the South Africans and now Bafana have just done something that we can be very proud of. And so it means that God is in the neighborhood. And God is in the neighborhood. Big up to South Africans. There's a, there's a lot Sundance of... Sundowns ladies were in the Champions League. Sundowns ladies were in the Champions League. <laughs> Sundowns won the NFL. Yeah. Uh, good moment. Good momentum. Good. I know you just want to talk about it. Good energy. <laughs> Good energy, yeah, Good coach. Energy. Uh, in 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 closing, now um, we we are we are in January, we are in February now. Actually, uh, yeah. we are about to resume resume the league. Uh, we made uh, a few signings now in January. Mm. We brought in. Um, I still is it as I still can pronounce the name of it now. Eskival. Eskival. 
Matthias. We, we signed Esquival Matthias. We signed um, uh, Zuko. I'm actually more excited about Zuko. I don't know why. We've signed Zuko Mtunyelo. We've signed Temingo Lodge. Um, yeah. We've, who else did we sign? Uh, uh, only signing. No. Tesh. Tesh. Oh, Tesh oh, Matthias. Tesh Matthias. <laughs> How can we forget Tesh? For that, is, that is... That, that is crazy potential like i honestly when i saw the story i, I honestly didn't believe yeah. we could get that over the line um are you happy with our signings yes and uh, big compliments to to the club mm. uh, to the sporting director fleming berg the and ryan hunt his mm. assistant they are the ones that run the that space yeah uh, of course they receive recommendations and the mid-season report from the coaches in terms of where do we feel we've got to improve you know, and then there's a recruitment process that has to take place that involves almost every single department of the club from the highest to the lowest in the technical space and then uh, a lot of hard work has to go in mm. and so we've got to thank the people that do put in the hard work behind the scenes because i can tell you for an example the lodge deal was done just before the window closes and and if it wasn't for the sacrifices of people like Yugesh, uh, Brastan behind the scenes pushing and, and working hard to to get it over the line before deadline day it's not possible mm. and so you've got to you've got to thank the board the the chairman uh, for the support for the vision and uh, and and the hard work of everybody you know at the club for 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 strengthening the team and 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 and, and uh, in in areas where we needed to strengthen when we had yeah. serious problems with injuries we struggled a little bit uh, in certain positions and particularly offensively and you could see that we we lacked um, enough depth in some of the positions to carry us through Mm. And now knowing that we've got three competitions to play for, which is the league, mm. uh, we've got the net bank, and then we've got uh, the, the Champions Fish. League. It means uh, we need uh, everybody available, fit and ready to go. Uh, but we also need quality in the depth, and, and I think that is what uh, we've done this window. And, uh, and there's some exciting times ahead. Yeah. Um. The way I interpreted the the signings, now you speak about like what we needed. I remember when you spoke about Nasir when he first came, you spoke about uh, floor raisers and ceiling raisers. Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, Nasir, like the injuries, it's it's something that no one can, yeah, yeah. can control. Yeah. Um, did you go out saying, I now need a, a ceiling raiser? Because the ones that we, we had like for the from the previous season, it, it maybe didn't work out for the time. No, I, th- I still think Lucas is a, is a ceiling raiser. Mm. I think Marcelo Allende is a ceiling raiser. Mm. And I think uh, there's quite a few like Temba Zwane and some local players who mm. in their specific positions you don't find locally better. Mm. Ronza is a ceiling raiser. Mm. Uh, uh, but but they come into and and that's what the ceiling raiser the te- definition is is you mm. take a very very good team that has already very very good players mm. and and because you come in as a very good player yourself you mm. you you stretch the capacity mm. of the ones that are already in and that's why it's a ceiling raiser because it's the ceiling is not the benchmark is not the new players mm. and their level the benchmark is the players that you have already Mm. And that's and and that's their ceiling. It's their highest pot level of potential. And once they reach that, how do you get them to be stimulated to go to the next level? Mm. Because because that's where you're graded. But when you bring in other good players, and when they say iron sharpens iron, what mm. starts to happen is the first people to to improve and to push a little bit more are the ones that you've already got. Mm. And so that energy comes in and already pushes the ceiling a little bit higher. Yeah. And so what we've been able to do also now is, I think, uh, conduct our business. And as I say, a lot of credit needs to go to the team behind the team mm. doing this. Mm. Is that we've been able to conduct our business in a very, in a very structured way but also in a very smart way because uh, there, there is potential for 
for greater growth and improvement from some of the players. And but there's also uh, immediate possibilities to get some form of output in in, in the in the very short term. Mm -hmm. And and so 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 we're very happy with the work done, and and I think it helps us to to move in a direction where the club can 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 grow uh, and and get sustained success for for many 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 years. Yeah, the the biggest talking point for this window is is obviously Timbiko Silvach. Yeah, and um, in the video the club posted, like you were on him and saying to him, the new so that I want. Is this specific Nyoso? Like, and we all know which Nyoso that is. Is the Nyoso who was football of the season, Nyoso who who, who came on for a final and scored that goal against Egypt. Um, do you think he 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 can give us that right now, or we should maybe look wait for preseason and wait for that Nyoso in the new season? No, I don't think we should wait. I don't, I don't think he, I don't think he comes I don't think Nyoso comes with that leverage. Mm. I don't think I don't I don't think and he knows that. Uh, because I've also had a time to talk to him. He doesn't come with that luxury. Mm. He, he he comes in as a big player and, and when you come in as a big player there are certain expectations, expectations. To be met. and those expectations are not are not because people are crazy it's because okay. you've shown that you are capable of doing certain things yeah. um i don't know how i feel about that video because there are certain things that i think uh, sometimes i have to stay between me and the player mm. um but I think it's important to say that recruiting Lodge and making sure that it's done the right way mm. was also very important. And we should squash whatever narrative, uh, negative, in, in whatever uh, people want to try to create. Mm. Uh, I can tell you that it was done the right way, mm -hmm. and 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 it and that has to do with, yeah, that has to do with uh, uh, the 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 respect that Orlando Pirates and Mamelodi Sundowns have for each other, yeah. and the leadership of Dr. Koza and our chairman and the Mutsipe family have for each other, mm -hmm. and then of course. Uh, my relationship with 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 Orlando Pirates, and in particular my respect for my late grandfather, mm. meant that if it were to be done any other way that showed any form of disrespect, my grandfather would be turning in his grave. Mm. And so it was very important that it was done correct mm. uh, with respect for both football clubs. Yeah. And as complicated as the deal was, uh, I do think that it was done in a manner that uh, 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 reflects the, the humility, this, the maturity of, of the leadership of, uh, uh, at the highest level, yeah. of the leadership of, of, of both football clubs. Yeah. Uh, how was the, 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 the mid-season camp? Are you happy with, with, with the outcomes of going to the camp and how, how, how did the new boys fare? Oh, super. Uh, Tashrik, I think Tash, we have to wait a little bit. Uh, yeah. uh, he's one for the future. Yeah. Uh, we have to be a little bit more patient. I don't think you'll see immediately now, but I think, but I think definitely one that has certain weapons that could, that could be developed to, to, to give us some, some very good, very good years from him. Mm. Uh, but he, he he comes in with a, a few complications, uh, which which uh, hopefully we can get over. Mm -hmm. um, um, they worry me, but I hope uh, this medical department and the sports science department that's performed miracles, with, even with players like Rivaldo, for an example. Yeah. Hopefully, they can they can get tested. 
as uh, as quickly into into the right space for competition and, and to help us because we need everyone. Uh, Matthias Escaval is one that excites me, mm. um, but but there has of course to be an adaptation towards uh, a different culture and movement and and also. One of the major reasons why I traveled to Brazil was to understand the South Af- South American mentality, and because we are getting so many South American players, I want I wanted to I wanted to go to South <laughs> America, but but also to Brazil to understand how South Americans live, their culture, their tradition, and how they think. Because then I can get a little bit more from these South Americans because I understand their culture, I understand their upbringing, the background, I understand uh, a little bit better. Uh, something that I would not understand if I was sitting at home and enjoying yeah. a holiday here. And so, so traveling to, to South America, and one of the major uh, uh, motivations was to go there and to understand the South and, and spend two weeks mm-hmm. where I could be just a general citizen <laughs> yeah. and walk on the ground, you know, and on the streets, on the beaches, and listen to what people are talking about and say. And understand the 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 way of life and and, and, and just what which is a luxury I, that I don't always have in South Africa. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I think with Matthias and having been in South South America, I do know now that he's going to adapt to the language and, and how difficult it is, you know, uh, the culture and the 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 standard of living, the speed of living. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Brazil being six, seven hours behind South Africa, not only from a from a time perspective, I think also gives it a feeling for me where I felt that technologically and in certain ways from a from a social perspective, they are they are slightly behind on certain things, and and so and so, but you wouldn't understand that if you don't go there. Yeah. And so I have a bit of an understanding, not too much, but a little bit more of a, a better understanding. And so some form of empathy and sympathy can be formulated between me and, so, and, and the South American players, and hopefully we can get more from those. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I think Matthias is one that excites me as well. Yeah. I think, I think uh, even though he's going to uh, adapt to how we train and how we play, which is completely different to how we played at Lanús, mm. and uh, the type of tactics that they were u- they were using. I mean, uh, for an example, uh, counter pressure is something is is very foreign to him. Mm. Uh, he, when they lost the ball at Lanús, the instruction was fall back, drop and center, and get numbers behind the ball and sit a little bit deep and wait. And you can't do that here at Sundowns. It's very difficult. And so already that is an adaptation that needs to take place, yeah. not just from a technical, tactical and a, f- a physical, because counter pressure is not just the physical and the tactical action. Mm. It's also the psychological action of recognizing one, the immediate, because when you, what happens with players uh, is when there is a turnover or a loss of possession, there's a certain moment that takes place for five seconds, a microsecond of dejection or, or disappointment. Oh, yeah. but, but if you, you, you express that for a counter-pressing team, we don't only lose the moment at that moment to, to win the ball back right there. Mm. Because the higher, lev- the higher the level is, if you have that moment of dejection, that ball is already passed out of the pressure zone. Yeah. And it's already started within that microsecond. It's already started an attack. Mm-hmm. F- because those players who counter press or defend and win the ball already in their minds know what action f- then follows. And so once they win the ball, they then, they then act on that. And therefore, you don't have time to, to, to be dejected because you've got to respond immediately. And that, that is not just a, a technical, tactical action or physical action that needs speed and aggression, but it's also a mental action that says, forget about the mistake immediately, mm-hmm. which is very, very difficult for footballers. Yeah. Uh, focus on the remedial action. Mm-hmm. And the remedial action is to try to get the ball back and apply pressure mm-hmm. immediately there uh, and defend in that moment. Mm-hmm. But also give... Uh, information and psychological um, energy to your rest of your teammates because that initiation 
part is only the first step of counter pressure. Mm. You need participation and then you need termination as the last stage where you regain the ball back and then you, you start an attack. But, but you initiate the counter pressure and, and, and then there are certain sub principles there where we talk about direction and uh, not pressing straight, but just communicating with your pressing action as to how you'd like to be supported in those moments. And, 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 and if you are outnumbered, well, how can, best can you use the touchline, which of, of course is always a constant on a, on a football pitch. Yeah. Uh, or, or, or then maybe don't even, when they break the pressure, don't even get involved in the press because you've got less numbers in and around that area. So there's a lot of things that happen in that decision-making process. But 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 as I say, is is this is this is a, a process that requires detraining and then training. And I think we are on the right way with Matthias Esquivel. And there's yeah. a uh, there's a, an incredibly gifted footballer there and someone that will that will help the club in with yeah. with really really a lot of very very good years. Yeah. Uh, Zuko is someone that also excites me. Yeah. Uh, I've been relatively surprised by his physical profile. Uh, watching him at Chippa, I we saw a very good player, mm. um, and a player that had potential capacity that was greater than maybe a lot of people think. Uh, there were one or two games where I saw, be it for default or, or not, but I saw him taking inverted positions and playing a little bit closer inside, which I liked a lot. Uh, and therefore, it was easier to 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 choose between the the right backs that we had shortlisted, mm. and him because already I thought he had very very good um, weapons too, and also a basic understanding of the type of fullback that I like, mm. and maybe even the type of fullback fullback that I'd like to develop. Which is something already we start to see in, in, in Europe with Tottenham, for an example, and you see how their fullbacks are, are used. It's completely different to how fullbacks are used now by maybe even uh, Pep for rest defense and inverting and, and those type of things. And yesterday I saw the wingbacks of, 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 of Bayer Leverkusen and their role in, in a low block and, and, and how they they limit the pressing of the central midfielders on the sides by stepping into the next line and then allowing the lateral centre half to cover the the, the full back position or the wing back position. And so these these things are constantly evolving and changing and 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 and, and, and I think Zuko has the intelligence but also I think as I said I've I've been surprised by his physical profile because he's got very good muscle definition. He's uh, He's a supreme athlete, mm. um, and he's extremely intelligent, actually. Uh, and I think tactically, we 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 can we can raise a little bit more from that. And uh, and and well, uh, Lodge is Lodge. I don't have to. <laughs> yeah, Lodge is Lodge is Lodge. Lodge is is about uh, is about trying to get his level back for sure. We all know it's not a secret. That Lodge's level is, is not the level that for the last three years that we've seen, mm. and uh, for the whatever for for whatever for whatever reason it is, and mm. it's not for us to be involved in that. Mm. Uh, but for whatever the reason is, uh, <laughs> the responsibility now is to try to get Lodge to. Unfortunately, I was at I was with him at Pirates when he won football of this season, mm. and so I think I have a. I have a little bit of an understanding of where his level is and was then. Um, and you have a clean slate with him. Yeah, we have a we have a good relationship. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's a good relationship, and it's yeah. one of of mutual respect and appreciation. Yeah. Um, but he comes in into a club where he's got to compete for a position, and he knows that he has to compete for a position with some some very, very good players. And it's not just about, uh, I mean, he's got uh, Tambazwana to compete with, he's got uh, Escobar, Gaston Serenio. Mendieta has, uh, has shown some very good things in this uh, in this break, which is actually very, very encouraging. Mm. And um, 
and the and that sundowns is is meritocracy is number one. You know, yeah. you play because you deserve to play, and not because the coach likes you or has a history with you. And he knows that, and that was number one discussion when when we knew it was it was close to happening. And uh, and uh, fortunately, also he he has an understanding for my weaknesses. You know, <laughs> yeah, so so. It's good to it's good to have a team uh, like this because it's a strong team and uh, a team that's made of good people and and we must not we must refrain from from judging people on their mistakes you know, just because you've made a mistake once in your life mm. we we then it mustn't define you now then we conclude that you are a bad person and so our coach Rolani already always says. That to play for Sundowns, you need to be a good person. Mm. But this person has made a very bad mistake, mm. and then, or, or because he's made a mistake, now we conclude that this guy is a bad person. Mm. I know of a lot of people who come across in society as very good people, yeah. but only because the mistakes they made that are very, very, very bad have not been exposed. Mm. And so it's unfortunate uh, that you know when your mistakes get exposed, really in that space. Uh, unfortunately, society is such that you get defined by the mistakes that you make, and and it, and I have seen this country lose a lot of very very good footballers, because instead of trying to rehabilitate and support and 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 and, and help and support and 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 guide. We let go and judge discard. And, and discard, and 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 that has and that has cost us many a talented footballers in this country, and I have tried to say to myself that my number one responsibility is to try to 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 support footballers as many, as much as I can because many of them, because they are talented, they are haunted and hunted. Mm-hmm. And many people don't really get to understand this, and 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 some of the most gifted human beings on 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 the planet, and 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 go go into music. Uh, Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, mm-hmm. R. Kelly. Uh, yeah, there's 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 quite a few skeletons in the closet. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't define who they are. And 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 I I for one because I I'm also one that is full of mistakes and full of weaknesses and maybe more mistakes and weaknesses than I have strengths and good qualities. I am one that that knows that my job is to protect talented footballers, yeah. um, but at the same time also try to move them in a d- different direction, and and uh, and hopefully I can I can. I can continue. God can continue to to give me the strength to to continue in this way because uh, uh, mine is to try to to help the footballer be the best version of himself. Mm. That's 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 my job. Uh, Sipombule must be the best version of himself. Mm. Uh, Tebo must be the best version of himself, or at least attempt to be. Yeah. Uh, and that's not only just the football part. That's the that's the social and the human quality part. Yeah. Is that you've got to be a good person to 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 really be a good footballer. And I and I am a I'm a very very strong believer in that. But I'm also a believer that uh, your mistakes do not make you a good or a bad person. Mm. Everybody makes mistakes, and everybody's got uh, secrets that they do not want to be exposed to nobody. Mm. And so we've always got to remember that when we are trying to judge others and we're looking at the mistakes and just because someone's mistakes were put in the public's domain and it's easy now, you know, because of social media and, and, and all of this. And it's so difficult. You look at Kyle Walker's situation. Um, maybe, maybe 10, 15 years ago without social media, it's not as heightened and, and, as it and, and spotlighted it as it is now. But of course, society has changed so much that it's like that. But, but the reality is you lose a lot of very, very good footballers mm. and very talented footballers because uh, we fail to, to support and, and, and protect and, 
and many are talented people and, and growing up in the township I think exposed me to that is that many are talented people are, are very very it's very important to protect and to to try to help them to 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 reach levels of themselves that maybe even they are not even aware that they are capable of. Mm -hmm. um, before we close, do we have a question from Neo or Toto? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> All right. Um, I, 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 it's a first. I, it's a first. <laughs> it's a first. Must always be ready. Yeah, but coach, uh, oh yeah, coach, now he has a question. Sure. Just off, off, off topic, coach. Um, the Ali pregame conference. Yeah. Was did the team know that you, you were going to do that, or no, it was just off the cuff? I went, went away when you told yeah, us yeah. how they that, that press conference. I yeah. think you know, the team was not aware. Um, Shupi was. I kind of prepared Shupi because I knew it was going to be a. Yeah. But I had prepared, I had prepared, and it was a discussion I had with Shupi, and I think it's the right thing to do because as, a, as the communications person involved in that space, it was only right for me to, to have that discussion with him, and I had prepared him slightly for it. And did you get the reaction you, you, you wanted from the journalists? Uh, well, I, I don't think I was really looking for a reaction. I, my aim was to protect the club uh, because I felt that we would be walking into the second leg with our pants down after the letter that al Akhli had released complaining about the incidents in the first leg. Uh, and I felt that that was their way of trying to put pressure on the referees. Uh, just in, well, I just uh, I just try to protect the team and protect the players, you know, from 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 a game that could possibly have gone completely a different direction. And I wasn't really looking for a reaction, but I was trying to I was trying to to protect and do my job. I mean, my job is to protect the club that I work for. And fortunately, the club I work for is. Is a, is a club that I have fallen in love with. And uh, um, I can say I'm a supporter. I did not grow up a Sundown supporter. And I did not grow up in love with Sundowns. But I can tell you sitting here now that I am a Sundown supporter. And, and this club will forever remain. I've spent a, a huge number of years. I mean, I spent three years in the academy. I spent four years before I left, and now I've spent another four years at the club. And so if you're looking at 11 years at, at, at a football club. And then of course, yeah, you start to grow feelings. Uh, and, 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 and Sundowns is a club, not only that I am fortunate to be the head coach of, and, and, and I consider myself extremely privileged. And even though there are moments where I do ask myself whether, is this worth it? Of course they are, but I do understand the privilege that I carry. And the day that that privilege is outweighed by the burdens and the, the stresses, that's the day that I do not deserve to sit in this position. And I will be the first because I love the club. I will be the first to say it. I will not wait for the club to say to me, no, we, want, we need a change. Because I love the club and I want the club to succeed. I don't see myself serving Sundowns without the same amount of intensity and energy. And the moment that goes, uh, and the love and the passion dies, is the moment where I have to step aside and give that the opportunity to, to make this club reach what it deserves to reach and achieve the goals that it deserves to, to, to achieve, I would be the first person to, to recognize that and, and, and step aside. But at the moment, I love, I love this club. I love the, the players. I love my players. Uh, I appreciate the support that they give me, the love that they give me. I uh, I appreciate uh, the support and everything that I get from the club's management. 
And so I, and even though there has been lots of talk from a lot of bigger clubs and all these things, but I can definitely tell you that I'm at Sundowns and up until both myself and the club decide that it's it's not working, then we will move in that direction. But while I'm here, I will defend the club with everything that I have. And that means also defending it in press conferences, defending it on the training pitch, defending it on the on the on the on the match pitch for over 96 97 minutes and making sure that we play for for our supporters and I love the supporters too and 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 for me with the Sundance supporters also it's there's a there's a there's something very distinct because there's there's something about relationships that come back from forgiveness and there has had to be uh a stage of reconciliation between me and the Sundown supporters. And I can say that genuinely from my side, uh, I have I have forgiven the Sundown supporter and maybe he may not represent the Sundown supporters in general, but they are Sundown supporters who, who made their feelings felt when I left for Pirates and they, and, 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 in in various ways. One you took two. No, no, <laughs> no. And uh, but 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 the depth of the pain mm. derives from the the depth of the investment, the love. Mm. Uh, the deeper the love and the appreciation for your work and your contribution meant that the deeper the pain for your departure. Mm. And 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 I felt that because the. And even there was a game between Sanan and 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 also still I do not. I do not feel like I deserved that, but there was a Sundown supporter who came during the match and, and lifted his hand towards me. And up until today, that Sundown supporter has not come back even to come to Chlorgop and offer an apology. But, but even without that apology, I've forgiven him. Mm. Even without the apology, I've forgiven him. And I've forgiven many a Sundown supporters who who felt disappointed by my move. And of course, I hope that in their hearts, they've forgiven me because I think they, they felt right to feel the way they felt. Because mm. when you invest in someone so much and you, you, you appreciate someone so much and he comes from the academy and he's, he's given you, and you have higher expectations for him and then you're all, all of a sudden, but I had, until today, I think I made the right decision. And I think I'm a better coach today because I left Sunlands. I left uh, and I grew, I made mistakes, I became better. I became a better coach, I became a better person. I had, I had failures, I had successes. Mm -hmm. But I think in hindsight, if you were to ask me, I would make the same decision. But I also do think that I have a very special relationship with the Sundowns fans because it's a bond that comes from a breakup and a makeup, mm. you know. And there is something very special about those type of relationships. Yeah. Uh, that the love is deep enough to overlook the wrongs yeah. and reconcile mm. because you want the betterment of a better future, better for each other. Yeah. And. Uh, I am I am at service for this club because I love this club and 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 I consider myself one of the 217 fans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm glad you know about that. Uh, in a, in in his current special, Dave Chappelle says you need to be wise enough to know when you are living in your dream, but you also need to be. You also need to be humble and accept when you're living in someone else's dream. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's one of those things because uh, there's always uh, how things, like you might do things this way, but you don't know how it affects the, the other person. But what you just said is very spot on, that the, the, the level of intensity of the love will determine the breakup. And then the level of intensity of the love after the breakup the love will be also determined by the breakup. For sure, but, yeah. but, but that's why I'm not over losing the Champions League. Yeah. Because my love for this club is so deep 
that 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 and for the players also that I strongly believe they deserved better the club deserved better the 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 players deserved better the fans deserved better mm. and to sit in a position where you feel responsible for not delivering what people deserved hurts because you have this deeply entrenched emotional connotation towards the fans the players the club yeah. and uh, and that is that is that it's yeah. it's 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 not just in in football but it's in life yeah, and, it's and, and 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 the reality also is that uh, you've got to have um, you've got to have a bit of thick skin uh, very funny um, the brighton coach my favorite disabri <laughs> um, he said uh, the next generation of coaches is going to have to be the strongest ever mm. football coaches mm. because you are never right you are never loved mm. and you are never shown any form of appreciation mm. and so uh, you are never right because data will always suggest to you whichever way you look at it that you are wrong yeah. you are never loved because even when you win there's something wrong maybe the performance was not good enough maybe you didn't score enough goals and people <coughs> and people sometimes forget that football itself is a low scoring game mm. and so sometimes we don't feel so happy with a 1-0 victory as we would with a 5-0 victory but 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 how many times does a team achieve 5-0 victories in a season not too many times no not even the best of clubs <laughs> not even real madrid man city you mm. you don't win 5-0 15 times per season mm. Uh, the one no score line is probably the most common score line in football mm. but you get 218 runs for six high high scoring runs in cricket mm. you get 97 beaten by 100 in basketball mm. uh, football not in football sure. not in football <laughs> 100 to 79 in football is, is impossible mm. A uh, football itself is a low scoring game and there's so many reasons for that. Mm. The number of players, the size of the pitch, the size of the goal, the goalkeeper, the position of the goal. So um it's there's a lot of things the ball the, there's so many things. And um but 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 you like I say there are so many things that in football that I I know that I I could possibly be wrong in in my beliefs about them. Uh but but these are my beliefs and these are things that I I see in my sleep. I see in in my moments when I'm watching the team train and I think they are possible and sometimes um I agree that maybe others may not see them. Mm. And uh even Venga was speaking about how how you get to watch so much football that you go mad the next day because you're in a position to say but my goodness when did i see this but only late head comes back mm. and you're like oh oh that's where i saw this and that's where this thing works mm. uh but 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 of course it's uh, football is 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 very interesting kids yeah. uh, we spoke about this thing so many times but the reality is this game is changing all the time all the time and and you need a you need a certain attitude you need a certain lifestyle uh uh, uh to to stay in it you need a certain level of obsession a certain level of attention to detail a certain level of passion because that's what maybe makes the difference at the end um and and uh, and and uh, an incredible work ethic um uh, that maybe even goes into a space that um that uh, compromises your health your relationships and you heard even Klopp saying he want, he just wants to be a normal human being that can spend time with his family mm. that's why he's leaving that's one of the biggest reasons mm. is because that's what football does to you and Xavi even said that he says he goes home and the mo- the result affects his behavior and his mood and how he is towards his wife and his kids 
And he says he can't be that selfish where football is, is in that space. But unfortunately, to get to that level, yeah. that's what it demands. And there's a price on every ticket. And, uh, and people, unfortunately, are yet to realize um, you, you came here and you guys, you, you walked in after Toto. And now, and they said, oh, you're working and watching football. <laughs> but you are outside. And the first thing that you, you said is, oh, you're working. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's the life I live. And the and it's, it. a, it's, it's the reality of it is that if you don't live it like that, it's, it's very difficult for it to, to support you and, and, and give you the success that you probably are destined to achieve. But at the end of the day, as I say, it's, it's about that, but you need the passion and you need to love the thing, you, know, you need to love the club, you need to love the supporters because you're not doing it for yourself. Yeah. And you have to, you're doing it to make other people happy. And uh, even though at times it doesn't make you happy and it, it, uh, it compromises your happiness, and, but you've got to do it. And that is why when Toto asked about the press conference, it was because I wanted to defend this club. Yeah. And if it came at, uh, at, uh, at running the risk of being slaughtered and, 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 and attacked by the Egyptian journalists, then so be it. <laughs> but <coughs> my, my, my purpose was to try to defend the club that I love and I serve. Mm. Coach, um, I'm not even sure how long it has been now. No, I don't know. And, and, and I know we haven't even spoken spoken about everything. But I just wanna, we just want to thank you for allowing us in We this should space. have one for tactics. Another tech <laughs> tech <laughs> we'll, tactical board, yeah. We will I've do got it. one in my office. No, we will do it. And we bring it here and we discuss. And maybe at the end of the season. We will, please. We will do it. We can shake on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll end of the season, it. we put yeah. a, a tactics board. I can fetch it upstairs. Yeah. Uh, we couldn't have this discussion in my office, though. <laughs> no, everything has its own time. My, my office is a mess. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's a workstation. It must be a mess. If it's neat, it means there's no work being done. No, there. it's a mess. Yeah. But uh, I enjoyed this, and hopefully we can... Because I think there's quite a bit of detail in, uh, yeah. in how we play. Yeah. Um, and and uh, it was good to see it being recognized in, in the FCON and people speaking about it and the recognition that the players got for it and yeah. uh, the performances that the players also put in, it was great. And uh, uh, huge congratulations to Bafana, huge congratulations to Hugo Poros, and huge congratulations to the entire squad, the nation. Yeah. But of course, because they are my <laughs> my players, huge congratulations to Temba Zwane, great yeah. tournament, two goals, uh, two men of the matches, I, I think. think two assists, well, two yeah. assists uh, yeah. maybe, yeah, in five games, what is it? Yeah, five games, six games, yeah. seven, seven, seven games. Seven games. He, he started all seven. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Great performances, Maseko, uh, some great cameo uh, appearances. I think one start and, and two or three substitute appearances with some very, very good influences. Yeah. Tapelo Morena, and people when I know when people said Tapelo right back, I said I don't see Tapelo in my mind <laughs> when I close my eyes and I try to envisage the team. I don't see him as a right back. He's got so many qualities as a as a as an offensive player yeah. that you yeah, that you miss when he's seventy meters away from the opposition goal. Mm -hmm. And you saw that at the Fcom. Yeah. I think he had a very good tournament in in offensive positions. Um, I thought them Toby and Grant were very colossal. No, were amazing. <laughs> but a great partnership. I thought Sailor grew with the tournament. Mm. Uh, I thought his game performance against Nigeria probably puts him as one of one of the best right backs in this continent. I might submit the best probably. Yeah, it's it's, it, it's you've got a big, 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 big shout for that. Yeah. Um, There's an argument to be at no, no, you can yeah. for sure. But you've got some some top some top right backs in the yeah. country. Uh, I mean, in, on the continent, like yeah. Hakimi, for Hakimi an example. Is, is a yeah, yeah, but but Sela, but 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 maybe it's a but maybe it's a bias from my side. Yeah. But Sela is not far away from that yeah. level. So you've got. He, a, he even a, I think you had a better tournament than him. Well, it's, it's subjective, <laughs> but but yeah, but but a, a top football player, yeah. um, and and one that also worked his way into the national team. Not, yeah. Didn't didn't get there because the coach liked him or did him favors, but his yeah. performances were good enough 
for him to eventually get nominated and, and into the team yeah. and selected. Uh, Terence Bashiro showed some very good signs towards towards just before FCON and because the coach also had trust in him prior to that when he started, uh, he he also made it and that's and that's good news uh, for some of the players like Musa Alibusa, Nao Mayama, Rivaldo Kutsia, who who Obas also who yeah. were a little bit unfortunate, beats on Kulisi who were a little bit unfortunate not to make the grade but. It shows that if you continue to work hard, yeah. eventually it happens. It happened from Shishi, it happened for Sela, and so the the outcome is that it can happen for the others. Yeah. And uh, there's a there's a shows why you you can't. I I didn't want to have a discussion about why Tebza is footballer of the season with people. I just I just I just and not because I I I I I was disrespectful, but because. Because I knew the level and why he deserved to be footballer of the season, and I don't think the people made, the people that made that decision made the wrong decision. And I, th I think, there is a reason why him and uh, Ronwen went on that shortlist for footballer of the season. With and I think yes. uh, Ronza was magnificent. Uh, five clean sheets yeah, in seven uh, games. In seven games, um, broke the record because it was with Andre Arendse for four clean sheets. And so Ronza now has taken the chair and has sat alone, and, and that's yeah. very important. The records are not there to be matched; yeah. they are there to be broken, and that's what he's done. And so big respect for him and his uh, role as, as the captain. Uh, Modiba, good tournament, very good performances, um, and uh, has shown all of them. I I say to you that uh, when we say that we we work to improve players at Sundowns. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 gratifying and 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 really deeply soul satisfying to see the level of their performances at uh, at Fcon and and their contribution to the success of of the nation and, and and of the country and so massive congratulations to everybody involved the technical team the the, the association and um, yeah now to even bigger and better things because. They've set a certain standard, and 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 third place is now not going to be good enough in the next Fcon next year in Morocco. Yeah. So good luck to them, and uh, good luck to 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 the team, and uh, and we thank them for for making us happy. Yeah. And we have a very big four months ahead of us now. Between now and and May is, is it's tough. Everything, all hands on deck. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So uh, only interviews I'm doing are press conferences. <laughs> we'll, ju we'll just see you at the end of the season for now we stay out of your way we see you stay out of our way and focus on the job at the end of the season we have a nice tactical board we yeah. have some clips even on the TV yeah. and we show some clips and why this, why that and different we've got a whole um, and I've got to give credit to our analysis department because we worked very hard on during the off season we've got a whole uh, uh, document now with uh, uh, a PowerPoint presentation or keynote presentation with over 500 slides um, on on some of the things we want to see and these are things we have to show the new players also <laughs> uh, because that's the work that's been done over the last three years yeah. um, 500 slides of, of, of content uh, based on how we want to play principles of our game schemes but how we train that and sub principles and sub sub principles and and as I said I've got to give a lot of credit to Mario to coach Michael also who worked very hard also with with uh, with Prinel and Gulam and Sbu Makitla mm. and uh, and Dale Solomon to put this document together mm. um, ours is to then go into stage three where we start also through, of course, the support of the, the, the club and the head of academy and, and different roles where we can present this model. And then it can be deeply entrenched right into the grassroots because we want to live this jersey better than we found it. And uh, we want to try to leave the club in a, in a situation where whatever we try to build uh, can be sustained for many, 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 many years. And so we've got a document now that we've 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 
we are probably in the process maybe by the end of the season because there's new things now that we've added now during this break that we will induct into this uh, in this into this um, football bible um that we want to to leave behind for Mamelodi Sundowns and uh, uh with it comes footage of not only the the scheme and how it's done practically during a match but it's also got training sessions mm. um, that go on to show how we did it and why we did it that way and 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 Hopefully, in the future, then youth coaches uh, in 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 within the club are able to adopt some of the exercises, but adapt based on this. And and I'm a firm believer that um, the youth have to understand how the first team plays, and they've got to be trained in this way. Uh, but I do think there is a gap in between that, which is a transitioning gap in really moving into, especially at this level of performance, where. Uh, you see Ajax, maybe even Barca use this quite a lot where they take some of their most special players and they make them go play for teams that have completely different uh, playing styles. And like I make an example earlier with you with Ntando Nkosi where I feel he needs to play for a team that plays and in a league where they play a lot for second balls so he learns to cover grounds and meters. He's, he knows how to play on the pitch, smell space, connect five, ten meter passes and and now certain th things that we have in our schemes where, for an example, we also steal things like the tabella for an example and I, and I call it the Ludo, which is, you know, in Ludo how if you make a roll of the dice and you make two steps and you stand in front of me, I can use you if I'm fortunate enough to roll a three I can use you as a, a ladder, a step easy to get to closer to home. Mm. And it's the same on football. Like you can use the pressure of the opponent with passes to gain ground and get closer to the goal. And so there are things that I try to explain by, because I know they love Ludo. Mm. So I try to explain that by that concept and they love playing Ludo. So I say, but this is how you play Ludo on the pitch. Mm. And then we try to train that and we try to show them those clips and, 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 and in relationism, which is Denise's big thing, he calls it the tabella, uh, the staircase. Um, but, 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 but football is constant. The, the, the point I'm trying to make is that football is constantly changing. So this, this Bible and that we're trying to create is something that will have to constantly evolve and change, uh, and uh, but but it is something that we want to we want to leave behind to the club yeah. as a way of saying this is. But the big clubs have these things. Yeah. Uh, Barca have their have their football bible. Yeah. Um, Real Madrid have their way of of training uh, in the youth and playing principles. Um, Ajax. Um, have this thing. So hopefully we are trying to create something that can help the club sustain the success for many, 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 many years and mm -hmm. and, and so that people know how we did it, but not just how we did it, but how it can be replicated. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's it's what we're trying to do at the moment and hopefully it's something we can present to the youth coaches and and we can see further successes, but maybe we can have time at the end of the season. We can go through some of the slides, some of the clips, some of the things and, and show the people because um, maybe a lot of people think coach, coaching is just talk show, you know. <laughs> coach, that's a, that's a very good place to end, uh, to end this um, sit down with you. We'll definitely have the time at the end of the season. Uh, we'll come here with our notebooks. And red notes uh, of this football bible. Thank you so much for your time, coach. And uh, thank you, sir. See you at the end of of this nice season. And thank you to Tlotlo. Thank you to Nell for coming. Yes. Amazing people. Of uh, course. Thank you, coach. Thank you. No, it's a pleasure. And thanks for now. You finally know where I live. <laughs> <laughs> and where I hide myself. It's, it's, it, there's a triangle. <laughs> it's Klonkop home. Loft us. <laughs> it's um, a scheme. Yeah, it's a scheme. <laughs> Job, guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.